Hampshire. This is, of course, Merlin. He's going to be doing all the showing off today. In the corner, Paul, you'll see there's another sea lion. That's Mateo. He's our five-year-old. Merlin is 19 now. And we've got Marvin, who's the third and final member of the gang, who is 23. All of these animals are male California sea lions. So as the name suggests, they are found in California, but can be seen as far north as Canada and as far south as North Mexico. And we have a bachelor group here at Mingoland because the sea lions, as a species, is doing fairly well in the wild. They're classed as least concern. And that's because they're doing really well, or fairly well at the moment, so there's no need to breed them at the current time. And also, if we had any girls with we could be overrun with lots of baby sea lions. So we've just got the three boys for now. Also, if we were to breed them, we'd have to provide them with a bigger pool as well, because they do breed very successfully. Now, Vernon likes to start the show off with a wave. I know there's not many of you out there, but if you all stick an arm in the air and wave it at Merlin, that's it. Merlin, do they all get a wave back? <laughs> Hopefully. Now, one of the things before we really get showing off, and that is all our sea lions love to hear the sound of clapping. So if Merlin does anything really well, or if he drops a cheeky hint, feel free to join in with a round of applause. He does love to hear that. If I'm lucky and he's in a good mood, I get the occasional greeting from Merlin too. So do I get a flip a shake and oh, a kiss? That was most kind. Now these animals of course have got teeth, they can and will bite, so we have to treat them with a lot of respect. And speaking of their teeth, we need to be able to check them, and so does the vet, because they can't tell if they've got any toothache or any problems in their mouth. So we've trained all of our sea lions to open their mouth on a simple hand signal. So Merlin knows if I touch him on the chin, he needs to open up nice and wide. So are you ready, Merlin? Say, ah. Uh... <laughs> now, as long as opening his mouth, he's trained to blow his nose. Now, this is strange and also really disgusting when it comes to Merlin, and there is a reason for it. They can suffer from infections in the nose and throat. If that enters the lungs, it can be serious, even fatal to them if not treated. So by training them to blow their nose on a sample dish, it means we can check the healthy inside as well as out. Now, unfortunately, I've forgotten to bring the said sample dish with me, so the only way I can demonstrate he blows his nose is with my hand. This is disgusting, but here we go. Are you ready, Merlin? On the count of three, blow your nose. One, two, three, blow! Oh, no. And of course he wants to clap. Disgusting. Now, that's the we can basically get a sample of mucus from our sea lions, or to put it less politely, snot. And uh, the reason why we do that is because it's rather difficult to stick a swab up the sea lion's nose because you might think that would be an easier way to get some mucus. It isn't actually. It's actually rather difficult to get a uh, snot sample from a sea lion using a swab. And that's because when these animals are relaxed, their nostrils are actually tight shut. And that stops water from going up their nose when they're swimming. They use tiny muscles in the top of the nose to open them up when they need to breathe, uh, inhale or exhale. So what we're going to do next is test Merlin's catching skills after that disgusting part. Ugh. Um, now I've got some hoops here. Now obviously these animals can actually catch fish in the mouth. But with these hoops, he's catching them over his head. A little bit different, but the same skills are needed. You've got to be good at judging distance and speed, which these animals are, thanks to their binocular vision, which is the same as you and I, which means they can judge distance and speed really well. So it means I can throw these hoops in whatever direction and he can strike out his lovely long neck to make the catch. And if he gets this last one, give him a clap. Yes, well done. Now because these animals are so clever, if we were to leave them just swimming around in the pool all day, inevitably they're going to get bored. When boredom sets in, behavioural problems do develop. So by teaching them anything, no matter how silly or simple it may look, it's therefore keeping them occupied because it's getting them to use their brain. It's basically keeping them from getting bored. If we weren't to do anything and we just left the sea lion swimming around the pool all day, and never see they're going to get bored. When boredom sets in, that's when behavioural problems do develop. So we do keep them occupied by training them and giving them different toys to play with and things like that. And with the activities, when they perfect something, we either train them a new thing or we make the existing one, like the hoops in this case, harder. Okay, so we're going to flip the hoops. So he's got to adjust his head at just the last second in order to make the catch. Now if he was to draw, oh nice save. Now if he was to draw, yeah he does have a last skill there. Now if he was to have dropped or missed that hoop, nearly happened, uh, lots of people think we punish our sea lions and that's how they learn. That doesn't work. If you punish the sea lion, 
it's not going to trust you. And trust is very important when these guys have got big sharp teeth and you want to work closely with them like we do. So if they do make mistakes, which we don't care, because they're not perfect, nor are we, uh, we just practice more. So I'm sure you guys will agree, practice does make perfect. Well done, Merlin. And it also helps if the trainer can throw, so we've got to make a good double act there as well. More often than not, if the sea lion misses something, it's our fault because we can't throw. Now, moving swiftly on to the next thing, which is telling the difference between a seal and a sea lion. Because we get lots of people calling these guys seals here, when none of them are, they're all California sea lions. So me and Merlin are going to show you three of the many differences between the two animals. The first being the least obvious is the ears. So any sea lion, no matter the species, has ears that stick out. So just behind his eye, he's got a tiny ear, just there. So if you can see a tiny ear that sticks out, it's the sea lion. Seals have ears in the same place, but they're just holes in the side of the head, usually covered with fur. Something more obvious is the front flippers, and that's because they swim differently. Sea lions swim with the front flippers, and they swim in a sweeping action, while seals swim with their back flippers, and they swish them from side to side. So basically, a sea lion, because he uses front flippers to swim, are really big and powerful, about the whole length of my whole arm. Now seals, because they use their back flippers to swim, their front ones are only the size of a human hand, okay? That's quite a big size difference there. And that becomes perhaps the most obvious difference, how they get about on land. Because in the water, they move differently. Out of water, they do so as well. So this is how a sea lion gets around. He can move on all of his flippers, Two front ones bending in the middle, the back ones tucking under the body, lifting the entire body up off the ground. So he can run around, he can jump, and of course he can climb. So he can move quickly and comfortably. Now seals, on the other hand, move in a very different way. And of course there are no seals here from England, but this sea lion that we have here has learned to do an impression on a seal. And until he's never met one, let alone seen one, is a very convincing impression. So let's see it, Merlin, your impression of a seal. Yeah, they can't stand or walk. All they can do is wriggle on their bellies like giant caterpillars because they don't have the size or the power in the front flippers to stand. That was a fantastic impression. Considering you're a sea lion. Now, another thing that a sea lion can do but a seal would struggle to do is a bit of gymnastics. Now, despite Merlin weighing 120 kilos, he can support all that body weight on his two front flippers here. Now that, we would call that, in human terms, a handstand, okay? But with it being a sea lion, we call it a front flipper stand, okay? So Merlin, are you ready to show everyone how strong you are? Can you point those toes? Beautiful. Well done, you've got it. fantastic. Now a seal would not be able to do that because its muscle is in the lower half of its body. So it wouldn't be able to stand on its front flippers at all. Now let's move on to another activity, a bit of ball balancing. Now this is great because it can keep them occupied for a long time. Merlin here took two years to pick up this skill, whilst it took Marvin just two months to pick it up. And Mateo over there, four years he's been trying, hasn't got a clue. But it shows you they're all different. Now usually we place the ball on the nose, don't need to do that. Are you ready? He can catch on the nose. Now, obviously this is a skill we teach them, is to keep them occupied, and it also gets them using their whiskers, which in the wild they use to find fish, but here, because our fish don't wriggle, we just defrost the fish, they don't use their whiskers at all, because they don't need to use them. So that's the reason why we like ball balancing, because it gets them to use those whiskers they otherwise would, uh, wouldn't use at all, but do so in the wild. Now, he is not watching the ball, that's a common misconception. Lots of people think the sea lion's watching the ball. It's actually the whiskers that are the key. The whiskers aren't strong enough to hold or move the ball into the Merlin's nose, but they are very sensitive and therefore can feel what the ball is doing. So depending on which way it tries to fall, Merlin can feel that with his whiskers and then in turn move his head. So that's how they learn to balance. Again, something we teach them, it is a fact, you're not going to see a wild sea lion balancing a ball. He's got far better things to be doing. Like finding, catching enough fish to survive, defending territory, and watching out for predators. Because even though they are a predator, they are prey to sharks and killer whales, which will come into dingy shallow territory and snatch a sea lion from the shoreline. Now after that very shaky start, he's gained control of the ball nicely. So well done to that Merlin, great balance, thank you. 
just like with the hoops, we're going to make the ball bouncing harder. So I've changed the ball, so that's one way we can make it harder. I could just stick with the basketball if I wanted to, do something different with it. But I'm going to make it harder by changing the ball completely, so we've got American football here. Then the next thing I'm going to do, okay, is to really prove that sea lions don't watch the ball when they're balancing it. We're going to get Merlin to swim and balance at the same time. Proving that there's no way he is watching that object. He's using his whiskers to feel what the object's doing, whilst using his eyesight to see where he's going, which is rather difficult when your nose is pointing in the air. Now, if he gets back onto his stand without dropping it, I'm sure you guys will agree he deserves a nice big round of applause. Now, obviously, we have whiskers around the nose for a reason, and it's to help these animals find and catch fish in the wild. So, when they can't see fish, for example, the water's dark and murky or if it's night time, or if the sea lion is to go blind, they're one of the rare animals that can still survive if they lose their eyesight. And it's thanks to their whiskers they're able to do this. By detecting the motions made by a fish's tail in the environment, they can follow those tiny ripples, even in a strong current, and if they follow them for long enough, they can easy to fish. And these guys are actually being tagged, caught, tagged, and recorded. They've actually found wild California sea lions in the wild, totally blind, but yet still fit and healthy. And it's thanks to the whiskers they're still able to survive and thrive in the wild, even if their eyesight fails them. Now, Merlin here is going to do uh, a couple more things for us, one of which is the high ball jump. Now, usually we end the show on this, but because Merlin isn't that great at this, okay, he needs the practice. So we instead end Merlin's show with his backward somersault, okay? And that's because he's the best. I'm the only one that can do it, okay? So we like to end on something he's really good at. So, he's aiming to hit that ping ball there, okay, guys? Now, if he misses, I still want to clap for trying. If he hits it, though, I want a big, big cheer, okay? So we're going to give him a countdown from three to one, and either way, a clap or a cheer, depending which way it goes. So, Merlin, come with me. Ready, everyone, from three. Three, three two, two, one. Oh. Here he goes, can he do it? Yay! Somersault. Um, we're going to explain what's happening at the end of the show. So Marvin, our oldest sea lion, who you haven't met, he took part in the show earlier on at two o'clock. He's having a well-deserved break, and so is Mateo. Uh, but Marvin is still going to be available to see. Okay. So at the end of the show, if you go that way, we're going to be selling some posters of our sea lions. So we've got two new ones. They feature all three of the sea lions on the posters. Uh, they cost five pound each, and anyone that buys one of those posters can stand and pose for a picture with the lovely Marvin. Marvin will be sat behind you, you'll be stood in front of him, so if you've got phones or cameras, get them at the ready so you can take pictures. We do accept cash and card, and all the money from the first sales does go directly back to our sea lions, helping with their everyday care, any vet bills, and our never-ending fish bills, so it's much appreciated. Also, it is £5 per person to have a go at doing this. So if you'd like to have a go, uh, just head through that small gate there, you'll see myself, uh, another member of staff and of course Marvin shortly after. So, let's get this backflip underway Merlin to end your show. So come down here in your starting position there. Okay. So this is pretty quick guys, so you don't want to blink or you'll miss it. He's going to throw himself head over tail somewhere in front of me. Okay, that's where the action is going to happen. Our ready audience, our ready Merlin, here he comes now. Now, I'm sure to agree, Merlin's done a fantastic job. You've been a little star, haven't you, Merlin? I hope you've enjoyed meeting him. If you come back to see us again soon, you might have put other sea lions out on stage. But thank you for me, Merlin, all the sea lions. Thanks for coming. See you all again soon, and goodbye.